Hi, I'm Steve Selig, founder of FitTest, and this video is my attempt at demonstrating uh, my uh, clinical reasoning to prescribe exercise for certain cardiovascular clients. And I thought I'd just use the example of um, my mind mapping that I go through in terms of trying to visualize what is happening to venous return for two very different clients. Obviously, I'm not measuring venous return before, during, or after exercise, but I can certainly use uh, physiological principles to mind map what is happening on venous return. So first of all, what is venous return? This is, the name's very descriptive, so it's the flow of blood, the amount of blood flowing back into the right ventricles from the uh, venous system, specifically the great veins. And this completes a closed loop between the pulmonary and the systemic circulations with cardiac output defining the systemic circulation uh, in series with venous return uh, so that the pulmonary and systemic circulations are in series. Now to come to a bit more quantitative uh, analysis of venous return. Venous return is expressed as the equation of the pressure drop between the average pressure in the great veins to the pressure in the first chamber, the uh, right atrium. And that pressure difference provides a pressure head into the right heart, divided by the resistance offered by the venous vascular system. So venous vascular resistance, RV. We'll come to some of the breaking down some of this formula a bit later on. If I just use the example of the diaphragm shown nicely on this diagram, on this picture. So if the diaphragm, if, um, well, during inspiration, the diaphragm is pulled away from the right atrium, in other words, down into the abdomen, and this will increase the ab abdominal vena cava pressure during inspiration. Obviously, the deeper, the better and will decrease thoracic vena cava pressure. So on inspiration, diaphragm moving down, increase here, decrease here, increasing the pressure difference between the, uh, um, the vena cava or the vena cava system and the right heart. So this increase in pressure uh, um, gradient here produces a stimulus for venous return. So on inspiration, we get, an in we get a momentary increase in venous return and on expiration we get a momentary decrease on venous return coming back to this picture here over the of say a full minute these all average out and so the cardiac output equals venous return over a full minute but we get this instantaneous uh, changes in venous return which can be helpful or not helpful for some of our clients during exercise so some of our clients, we may not want them to take very deep breaths. Others, we, we do. Um, other influences on venous return and not breaking it down into the various components of the formula are um, the effects of gravity on venous return, the effects of posture, uh, the neurohormonal um, hormonal influences on venous vascular resistance, the RV, uh, straining, uh, for example, will uh, change the relationship between the abdominal and thoracic uh, pressures, um, uh, muscle pumps, uh, venous, even venous valves. So there are a number of influences which influence uh, venous return, uh, some of which we can control very nicely in exercise and some that we can't. And I'll give you, so I'm going to go through two of my client case examples of how I would mind map venous return to affect the exercise prescription. So the first client type that I want to describe is um, Fontan clients. Now, I'm not going to go over the Fontan operation. There are a number of different variations of Fontan. But on Fontan, what essentially the surgeons are doing is putting conduits in this, this uh, light blue uh, uh, structure here is a conduit. Uh, which has been written, meaning that the right heart is now being um, uh, bypassed in terms of venous return. There's only a tiny amount of direct venous return going into the right atrium. 
most of this conduit is directing blood flow from the inferior vena cava directly into the pulmonary arterial circulation to go to the lungs. Now, this example here is in someone with hypoplastic left ventricular uh, syndrome, very malformed uh, left ventricle, uh, which means that it's not going to produce the cardiac output necessary uh, for really a good quality of life. So what the surgeons do in this case is they've replumbed the pulmonary, the uh, vena cava circulation directly into the pulmonary circulation, bypass the right heart altogether. Because the right ventricle is well formed and the left ventricle is very poorly performed, hypoplastic, the right ventricle is essentially being used to produce cardiac output. Now, the way that works, of course, is when the blood comes back from the lungs here into the right atrium, we've got a large shunt from the right atrium, oh, sorry, from the left atrium to the right atrium into the right ventricle, which is then an effective pump. And that is then directing blood into the aorta. Now, this is Fontan superimposed on someone with hypoplastic left ventricular syndrome. Now, my client is different to that. I'm not going to go over uh, the specifics of the client, except that this client had double inlet left ventricle, which I won't talk about here. Uh, the, the client also had what's called dextrocardia. So all of the right side of the heart or the right atrium was, was on the left of the left atrium, if you can understand what I'm, what I'm saying there. And the aorta was on the right side rather than the left, the pulmonary circulation on the left side instead of being on the right. This is called dextrocardia. Now, what the surgeons did in two operations, a Fontan and then a Fontan revision, the first operation being at one year of age, the second operation when the client was 20 years old. And essentially there was a Gore-Tex, a large Gore-Tex conduit, as I showed on the previous diagram, uh, from inferior vena cava into the uh, uh, right pulmonary artery. And there was also a bovine pericardium used to produce a conduit from the superior vena cava into the left pulmonary artery. Again, what was happening here is the right atrium was completely bypassed. In fact, they excised that right atrium on the second operation. So this, what, what the effect of this is, is that venous return now does not have the advantage of the right ventricular pump as it would normally do in a normal heart. So um, venous return and pulmonary circulation is determined completely on the integrity of venous return. So when we go to prescribe exercise, we want to promote exercise. We want to um, recommend exercise that promotes or enhances venous return. And that's what I've done in this recommendation. So I've mind mapped this as having is we have to protect venous return for, for clients such as this when they go to exercise. And I've given you two examples. This is left ventricular hypoplastic heart, and this is a double inlet left ventricle heart. So coming to the exercise recommendations, we're going to use exercise to promote venous return because we don't have the advantage of the pumping chamber, normally the right ventricle, uh, to promote venous return. We're simply relying on passive venous return, if you like. So I'm going to recommend swimming because it's horizontal, so it gets away from gravity, the effect of gravity. It's upper body, which is promoting circulation in the thorax. And, it, and swimming usually also produces higher, um, deeper inspiration than say an equivalent um, intensity of exercise for something like walking or jogging or cycling. So I like the fact that we're using deeper inspiration on swimming to promote venous return. Chest deep water exercise, you've got to be careful uh, about this with people with heart failure. I may do another video in this series on my YouTube channel in relation to this. Uh, but at the moment, I just want to say that chest deep water exercise, if you think back to the previous uh, slide, where we're talking about abdominal uh, vena, um, uh, vena cava pressure versus thoracic vena cava pressure. In ch chest deep water exercise, abdominal vena cava pressure will increase greater than thoracic because of the hydrostatic pressure gradient as you're standing or exercising in chest deep water. 
and this will help to promote venous return. Um, any uh, prone exercise such as Pilates or supine exercise such as uh, supine chest press, these are all helping to promote venous return. Now, I also want to offer some modes of exercise that I wouldn't recommend uh, avoiding or at least limiting. Uh, treadmill walking or jogging, uh, standing free weights and standing stretches, valsalva and straining because this will increase venous resistance, especially in the thorax, and that can uh, then uh, decrease venous return, which is what we don't want. And I've just put a question mark around um, high intensity training and high intensity interval training. I'm not saying don't, don't do it, but think about what you're doing how you're doing it, the effect of gravity and posture, uh, avoid straining, um, avoid breath holding. So just think about what you're doing with HIT uh, if you're going to apply that for someone who has had an, a Fontan uh, procedure. Now I want to come to client two, which is a completely different scenario. And I've just uh, proposed a client with chronic heart failure New York Heart Association uh, functional class 3B, which is, uh, you know, pretty pretty uh, significant symptoms even at mild exercise, and this client has a history of acute pulmonary edema, and so we need uh, some limitation on venous return during exercise uh, for this client. Now, coming to the Frank Starling relationship, and I have produced. Uh, uh, a video on my YouTube channel on Frank Starling, and I recommend you go to that and have a look at that video. Now, what we're talking about here is a client on the green graph here who has um, previously um, uh, been hospitalized with pulmonary edema due to excessive venous return and excessive um, left ventricular end diastolic volume, which has put undue stretch on the myocardium and made it, um, in terms of the ventricular performance, stroke volume has been reduced. Now, first of all, before I come to my client, uh, a normal heart is just showing here, the red, um, the red arrow is just venous return, and the black outline here is just showing the size of the right ventricle. Now, if we come to my client, who has heart failure um, class 3B, where we've got increase in venous return um, in, in certain scenarios, which will put extra stretch on left ventricular end diastolic volume uh, chronically or acutely and could cause pulmonary edema. Uh, but from a, a functional point of view, there's a reduction in stroke volume, which will make his heart failure acutely worse. So if we overstimulate venous return and overstimulate end diastolic volume, we can make this person worse. And just showing here my client where he uh, lies on the green graph, we want to keep obviously to the left of pulmonary edema and he is only just to the left of pulmonary edema. So I've got to make sure that the exercise that we're proposing will limit any further increase in venous return and end diastolic volume. So what I'm uh, recommending for my client here is exercise that will limit venous return. Uh, I'm recommending seated exercise such as seated row, uh, seated chest press versus, um, versus uh, horizontal. Uh, Chair-based exercise and ball-based exercise are all very good. And uh, what I'm going to uh, also recommend is some treadmill exercise and cross trainer. Uh, exercise modes to avoid would be uh, swimming for the exact opposite reason of what I had with my Fontan client because this will promote venous return. It will then possibly push us too far to the right on Starling and put this person at risk of acute pulmonary edema. Uh, chest deep water exercise for exactly the same reason. We don't want to increase venous return. Um, prone exercise. Uh, because this again will promote venous return. Supine, uh, similarly. And uh, I would, I'm not even putting a question mark around HIT and uh, high intensity interval training here. This is just a form of exercise that I would avoid with these sort of clients from the point of view of venous return. 
So I hope um, I've been able to share with you my uh, my visualization of venous return for two very different cardiovascular clients and how I mind map this to produce some sensibility around exercise prescription. So thank you for looking at this video. And as always, you can get back to me at info at myfitness.com.au.